What have a lot of foreigners been doing recently in order to manage to stay in the country legally and teach? Hi, hello and welcome to another episode of China Teacher, where I share with you what it is like to be an English teacher in China. Today, I want to share with you how some foreigners manage to get work visas and then teach in the country without too much heat from the government. Uh, word of warning, this will not work for most newcomers as it takes some time and money, but it is a good option for people who have been in the country for a bit and would like more stability in their careers. So, if you want to know how to do this, don't go anywhere and see you on the other side of the intro. Be a real bad boy. Welcome back everybody. If you're new here, let me tell you that in this channel, I talk about what life is like as a teacher in the country. And I also talk about tips and strategies for teachers and students. And I also try to give you guys some cultural insights into what life is like in China. So if you're interested in any of this, then consider subscribing to my channel. If you're doing that, then don't forget to hit the bell button. So that way you will be notified whenever I have a new video out. All right. Let's jump right into the topic, okay? So, what have a lot of foreigners been doing recently in order to manage to stay in the country legally and teach? In short, here it is. They start their own companies. Now, let's slow down for a second, okay? There are many things to consider when you decide to open up a company in China. The most important one is, will the company have the right to employ foreigners, which is what you would like to be doing in the end, right? You would like to employ yourself. So, first thing, find out which kind of company license allows your new company uh, to hire foreigners. This is key because your company license will have a, a, a small note mentioning this. Now, secondly, will it be a foreign-owned company or a Chinese-owned company? That has nothing to do with the source of the funds, okay? You can use your money, but set the company on their Chinese friend name. That is super risky, but it is cheap. A wholly owned foreign enterprise, or WUFI as they call them, are both expensive and complicated to set up. The company will be under your name, but not only, as I said before, is it expensive to set up, but also super expensive to run. Taxes are higher, sales, salaries, finances in general, um, all these things are under loads of government scrutiny. So you need to be you need to be good at managing a company. Another aspect to consider is how to teach if your company does not have a license to teach. That's something that has become quite a problem lately. Uh, they want you to have uh, a license to teach. You want you want to open an English training center. Setting up a proper training center has been very has a very very long list of requirements from floor area requirements to educational appointees. This is key, guys. Um, a, a, a Chinese training center or a training center needs Chinese people to be the face of the center before educational authorities. And before you ask, no. Foreigners do not fit this role. So what many training centers do is they give a monthly stipend to whoever fits that role and they agree to put their name on paper. So that's that's super difficult to do uh, because, well, as you know, foreigners are not that easily trusted. So how to circumvent this obstacle? Um, a lot of these new firms, they, they become consulting companies. And when they want to employ themselves with a school or a university or even a company, right, to do, to do English teaching, they sign consulting agreements with, with the schools or the factories where they perform their services. This allows the school, um, the schools uh, that are hiring the teacher to sort of like wash their hands. Yeah, since they're not hiring a teacher, they're contracting a consulting service with a third party. So there you go, guys. Um, a lot of foreigners are resorting to starting their own companies in order to gain control of their careers in China. 
This allows them to this allows them to stay in the country legally and teach somewhat legally. It is not called teaching, it is called consulting. All right guys, so that's all the information I wanted to share with you tonight. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. And as always, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content of my channel, then consider subscribing to it. And when you do that, make sure to hit the bell button so that you will be notified whenever I have a new video out. And well, until I see you again, guys, take it easy. Bye for now.